Beloved people of God, it is good to worship with you. I'm Holly Morrison, the pastor of Phippsburg Congregational Church, United Church of Christ. Are you climbing the ladder with Jacob, or dancing the circle with Sarah, or just climbing the walls with all the stress and strains of these days? No matter who you are, and no matter where you are on life's journey, you are welcome here. Now, if your journey through life has been anything like mine, this is a good time to stop, pull over, and take a breather. Let this be your rest stop, to let your heart relax and your breath deepen. Let this be your scenic viewpoint, to look around and notice the beauty of this day. Take some time to marvel at it. Take some time to praise God for the blessing of fresh perspectives. And now, let the music move you into a time of worship.
Join me for her call to worship. Heaven is above us. Blue skies and thunderheads, blazing stars and clammy fog. Heaven is beneath us. Green grass and caked mud, sand and creeping weeds. Heaven is all around us. From diverse landscapes and uneven paths, we come to worship the architect of wonder, here in the house of God at the gate of heaven. O Lord, you have searched me and known me. You know when I sit down and when I rise up. You discern my thoughts from far away. You search out my path and my lying down and are acquainted with all my ways. Even before a word is on my tongue, O Lord, you know it completely. You hem me in, behind and before, and lay your hand upon me. Such knowledge is too wonderful for me. It is so high that I cannot attain it. Where can I go from your spirit? Where can I flee from your presence? If I ascend to heaven, you are there. If I make my bed in Sheol, you are there. If I take the wings of the morning and settle at the farthest limits of the sea, even there your hand shall lead me and your right hand shall hold me fast. If I say, surely the darkness shall cover me, 
and the light around me become night. Even the darkness is not dark to you. The night is as bright as the day, for darkness is as light to you. Search me, O God, and know my heart. Test me, and know my thoughts. See if there is any wicked way in me, and lead me in the way everlasting. In the Spirit of Jesus, we pray. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory forever. Amen. Hey kids, I hope you have some cool water to jump in or a sprinkler to play in because it is hot today. I don't know about you, but hot days make me kind of grumpy. If I can't go swimming, I start to wilt like a daylily at the end of the day. I'm all used up. Other things make me grumpy too. I get grumpy when I can't go to church. I get grumpy when I can't sing lots of loud songs. I get grumpy when I can't spend time with my friends. Do you have things that make you grumpy? I know some of you are missing your friends, too. It's hard to wash our hands and wear masks and be careful all the time. But you know what? We can do these hard things, and God can help us. Try this. When you have hard things to do, try to balance them with good things. I know a doctor who sees people every day who are sick and scared. You know what this doctor does first thing every morning? He gets out of bed, goes into the bathroom to brush his teeth, and he makes funny faces in the mirror until he cracks himself up. I know a farmer who has to work hard every day with biting bugs and scratchy plants in the hot sun. You know what she does last thing every evening? She walks around her garden and she looks at all the plants growing and all the flowers blooming and all the berries ripening and she takes a deep breath and she eats some ripe berries right off the plant. And she remembers, yum, this is why she works so hard. 
She loves all that tasty food, and she loves that garden. God is really, really happy when we notice good things. So here's something for you to try. Every day, no matter how grumpy you feel, maybe even especially if you're grumpy, try and notice one beautiful thing. Watch the clouds in the sky. Watch the ripples and the sparkles on the water. Look for butterflies or dragonflies. Notice somebody's beautiful eyes or their strong legs or their beautiful smile. And when you see something beautiful, tell God, thank you. When you notice at least one beautiful thing, it makes God happy. And it might make you less grumpy too. Let's pray. God, you have filled up this world with beauty. The beauty of light and shadow and colors the beauty of music and voices, the beauty of cool water and good food, the beauty of kindness and friendship and love. Help us to notice at least one beautiful thing every day. Amen. Let us pray together. Friends in Christ, there is nowhere we can go that is beyond the reach of God, and there is nothing unworthy of sharing with God in prayer. Let us bring our thanksgivings, our sorrows, and our struggles to the one who forever holds us close. We give thanks for Jean and Ron Flink and Lloyd and Lorraine Lowell, who celebrate their wedding anniversaries this week. We offer prayers of thanksgiving for birthdays too, including Anne B., Ames, Kitty, Leah K., and Tristan M. May the year ahead unfold for each of you with many blessings. We give thanks for other lives that have blessed ours, for C.T. Vivian and John Lewis, giants of the African-American freedom movement, who both endured violence and labored tirelessly for peace. And we give thanks for two beloved Passamaquoddy elders, Georgina Sapir Richardson and Molly Neptune Parker who blessed many with their deeply rooted cultural wisdom. Loving God, we lift up these mighty souls and all who have graced us with their gifts, even as we are rocked by the grief of their passing. As we hear news of the misuse of force, remind us of the power of soul force. As we are weighed down by our troubles and the world's troubles, help us recommit to what Representative Lewis called good trouble, holding authorities accountable, questioning unfair systems, and putting our shoulder to that old arc of history to help it bend toward justice. We pray for those who feel broken and those on the mend. We pray for teachers and administrators dealing with the impossible questions of school reopening, and all who weigh the desperate needs of their livelihoods with the need
to simply keep people alive. We pray for all who are fighting for survival or mourning the millions killed and damaged by COVID-19 as cases continue to surge. And we give thanks for mask makers, mask wearers, and all who demonstrate their devotion to the care of our communities. With Carolyn S., we offer prayers of thanks for all doctors, technicians, and medical staff who are engaged in the marvelous work of healing. And now, in the silence, we bring all that we are and all that we long for to the God who hears us even before we ask. Let us be in prayer. O oh God, you have searched us and known us. You know our lying down, the weariness and the wide awake nights. You know our rising up, the glory of your children fully alive, engaged in positive action. You know us in our fullness and our emptiness, and you love us every awkward angle and shining spirit. Shelter the suffering. Give strength to the weak and hope to the despairing. In all things, enlarge our awareness of your love and renew our dedication to the good trouble of your kingdom on earth as it is in heaven. Amen. We are climbing Jacob's Ladder. If you've ever sung that song, then you are familiar with today's Bible passage. Or maybe not. Jacob's lovely dream of a ladder full of angels didn't come in the middle of a summer vacation when he had time for dreams. It came when he was in the middle of the desert, running away from home. It came when he had lied and cheated and failed everyone around him, reversing his family's powerful history of blessings. And now Jacob had cut himself off from all of them, and maybe even God. Selfish and miserable, exhausted and alone, he grabs a stone for a pillow, lays down in the wilderness, and falls asleep. Reading from the book of Genesis, Chapter 28, verses 10 through 19a. Jacob left Beersheba and went toward Haran. He came to a certain place and stayed there for the night because the sun had set. Taking one of the stones of the place, he put it under his head and lay down in that place. And he dreamed there was a ladder set up on the earth the top of it reaching to heaven, and the angels of God were ascending and descending on it. And the Lord stood beside him and said, I am the Lord, the God of Abraham your father and the God of Isaac. The land on which you lie I will give to you and your offspring, and your offspring shall be like the dust of the earth and you shall spread abroad to the west and the east and to the north and to the south, and all the families of the earth shall be blessed in you and in your offspring. 
know that I am with you, and will keep you wherever you go. And I will bring you back to this land, for I will not leave you until I have done what I promised you. Then Jacob woke from his sleep and said, Surely the Lord is in this place, and I did not know it. And he was afraid, saying, How awesome is this place! This is none other than the house of God, and this is the gate of heaven. So Jacob rose early in the morning. He took the stone that he had put under his head and set it up for a pillar and poured oil on the top of it. He called that place Bethel, which means house of God. I invite you to pray with me. O God of Jacob, you speak in the light of day and in the dark of night. When our sleeping is filled with dreams of heaven and earth, may Jacob's vision remind us to be open and watchful, ready to discover your presence in our midst. Amen. Do you ever feel blue? Do you wake up wondering why you should bother to get out of bed? And does it take all the energy you have just to drag yourself through the day? Do little things make you want to cry or say something harsh so that others feel the same discomfort that's eating away at you? Do you ever feel that kind of blue? And what if you're feeling blue, but also seeing red? Does it ever feel like that inside your heart or inside your head? Feel like shouting, like your irritation needs rerouting? Does the news just stir you up or simmer with the heat? Feel like kicking the dog with your two left feet? Wish your enemies' heads would just blow up dead. You ever see that kind of red? Seems like things are set up this way today. Blue or red, no other choices. No time or room for any other voices. <sighs> Sorry. If I'm a little wound up, it's just hard not to feel like Jacob lately. Here is a man who stole his brother's birthright because he thought there weren't enough blessings to go around. Jacob was always afraid the rug would be pulled out from under him. And it feels like we are living in awfully unstable times. I hear about the government cutting all the safety net programs. And I know the faces and names of already suffering people who must now face more stress, less security and stability, more pain, more fear. I hear about subcontractors brought in from out of state to replace the folks on strike. And I get angry about the way workers are pitted against other workers while they're just trying to keep their families fed. I feel sad as I hear of another local business closing, a business that was a part of the beating heart of our community. And I know there are so many effects that ripple outward. We're all feeling our endurance tested. We miss each other. And we're finding that it takes more energy even to get through our regular routines. And some days, it's like running a marathon just to stay in place. When the going gets tough, Jacob ran. He ran out on his family. 
He ran away from all of his obligations and routines, and he kept on running until he was out of town. Almost back to the run-down old place his grandparents had left. A wasteland littered with nothing but painful memories. When the sunlight began to fade and Jacob couldn't see well enough to travel further, he held the ultimate pity party, declared the place hateful and himself unlovable. And I love this part. He shoved a rock under his head as if to say, no pillow for me, thanks. This rock represents the hardness of my heart and I'm going to sleep now, abandoned by God in this abandoned place. And he dreamed that there was a ladder set up on the earth, the top of it reaching to heaven. And the angels of God were ascending and descending on it. There it is, Jacob's ladder. Probably a step ladder or something like those pyramids in Egypt or those fancy towers in Babylon the ones with the massive steps seeming to reach all the way up to the sky. And God's messengers were constantly running up and down those steps like linemen in all their gear, repairing and upgrading the network between the divine and the human, doing their best to distribute resources and improve communication. And it must have worked because Jacob finally heard what God had been trying to tell him all along. There are enough blessings for everyone, you included. Know that I am with you and will keep you wherever you go and will bring you back to this land for I will not leave you until I have done what I have promised you. Then Jacob woke from his sleep and said, Surely the Lord is in this place, and I did not know it. And he was afraid, and he said, How awesome is this place! This is none other than the house of God, and this is the gate of heaven. Feeling blue, seeing red, maybe that's part of our problem. We're spending all of our waking hours trying to wave our own flags or even redesign them while God is trying to draw our attention to other displays with a broader array of colors. Look, God says, here's some beauty to give you hope. Here are lupins along the roadside and the taste of fresh lobster and fresh berries to give your senses pleasure and help you feel fully alive. Here's the sparkle of light on the water and a soft summer breeze because I want you to share in the joy I have planned for you. Or as Suge says to Seeley in one of my favorite books, listen, God love everything you love and a mess of stuff you don't, but more than anything else, God, love, admiration. You saying God vain? Seely asked. No, nah, Shug said. Not vain, just wanting to share a good thing. I think it pisses God off if you walk by the color purple in a field somewhere and don't notice it. Alice Walker was amazed at the reaction people had to her book, The Color Purple. 
The critics had all kinds of things to say about the African-American characters and the power of the plot and the meaning of the book for American society. But just like old Jacob, they kept missing the essence of the message. A decade later, Alice Walker added a new preface to the book to make the meaning crystal clear. The story was for her explicitly theological. It was about the powerful shift humans can experience when we move from dogmatic restrictions to a sense of spiritual freedom in our relationship with God. Walker writes, I would have thought that a book that begins, Dear God, would immediately have been identified as a book about the desire to encounter and hear from the ultimate ancestor. Perhaps it was a sign of our times that this was infrequently the case. If it is true that it is what we run from that chases us, then the color purple, this color that is always a surprise, but is everywhere in nature, is the book that ran me down while I sat with my back to it in a field. She writes further, no one is exempt from the possibility of a conscious connection to all that is. Not the poor, not the suffering, not the writer sitting in an open field. This is the book in which I was able to express a new spiritual awareness, a rebirth into strong feelings of oneness I realized I had experienced and taken for granted as a child. A chance for me, as well as the main character, Celie, to encounter that which is beyond understanding, but not beyond loving. And to say, I see and hear you clearly, great mystery, now that I expect to see and hear you everywhere I am, which is the right place. The forces of hate are powerful. And there are those who thrive on the unholy work of dividing us, making us feel blue, making us see red. But God offers us purple instead. In our awakening to pleasure, in the engagement of our senses, in the seeking of delight and wonder, we are accepting God's ongoing invitation. It's one of the most life-giving spiritual disciplines we can engage in, especially now. Lily Tomlin calls it doing awe aerobics. I promise you, this exercise is very good for your heart. Friends, we are in this for the long haul. Like Jacob, our awakening has barely begun, and the challenges around us can make us feel like shutting down. But God has so many blessings yet to bestow. Or those angels wouldn't keep running up and down. Then Jacob awoke from his sleep and said, Surely the Lord is in this place, and I did not know it. And he was afraid and said, How awesome is this place! This is none other than the house of God, and this is the gate of heaven.
hear these words of benediction. Surely the presence of the Lord is in this place. Go forth in awe of the beauty of it. Go out and embrace the wonder of it. Go and live out the blessing of it. Beloved ones, members of the household of God.